Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Len Hampton. I'm with uh, Plus Tech Inc., and we're uh, demonstrating uh, two machines, our Sodic GL30A LP. LP is a super high response, like a two to three millisecond response time machine. We sell a lot of those. Uh, we, we range up to 500 ton in, vert in horizontal and 200 ton in vertical machines. Um, what's special today, and I'll take you around the machine a little bit, we're partnering with some fantastic uh, uh, partners, uh, really on the high end of the technology curve. We've got Matrix Tool, which is, uh, has built a very intricate tool here with a lot of micro features in the, in the parts. And uh, it's a real uh, engineering grade, high, high temperature engineering grade material. Uh, it's a liquid crystal polymer from uh, Sum Sumitomo Sumica Super, uh, running very fast cycle times. And um, we'll show you that as well. But, but running all day, we're uh, running 12,620 cycles, very consistent, uh, very, very fast fill times, right in the uh, 1.2 second fill time. And uh, minimum cushion you'll see is 1.3 millimeter uh, consistent. So that's one thing you can really get out of a SODIC uh, machine is uh, fill time consistency and dosage accuracy is, uh, I think, um, of course I'm partial, but I think it's the best uh, available. So we're also gonna be, um, well, well, you know what I'll, do? we're also gonna be showing a liquid silicone rubber machine, and we're partnering with MR Mold, Rick Finney and Jerry Anderson. Uh, MR actually built the tooling and automation on this tool. So, uh, <laughs> of course, so in any event, we're running a, li a liquid silicone rubber mold here, which has an automation uh, in-mold slitting device, which Rich will, uh, Rick will talk about in a few minutes. But I want to bring, bring it back to uh, Matrix Tool. And maybe, Tom, you could say a few words about some of the inner workings of the tool. Thank you, Len. My name is Tom Moyak, and I work at Matrix Tool. I'm the business development manager there. Uh, when we were discussing what, how to showcase our capabilities at, at a trade show, it's really hard because you can't always bring a customer's mold and run production parts at a show. So you want to make an investment and try to show, showcase your capabilities. Now, our company is primarily making the really intricate electrical connectors. It's automotive, telecommunications, and as everybody knows, the more time goes on, the smaller circuits get, the closer together they get, and we were starting to be challenged by traditional equipment, traditional ways of doing things with building your mold, laying out your parts in the mold, using the, the traditional injection molding te machine techniques. Uh, so we really want to, that drove us into the micro realm internally, so we do, we call small parts molding because we not only have micro mold parts, but we have parts that we consider micro featured. A lot of what we do in connectors are very, very fine featured parts. That pushed us to look at everything basically you know, like lean manufacturing, apply that just like Sodic has done to eliminate waste on their machines and make things more efficient. We did that to our process as well. So we look at unique layouts in our, in our, in our molds to reduce flow lengths, get cavities tighter together, um, reduce material waste. And in doing so, the reducing flow lengths, you can, you can fill smaller runners, save material, thinner features, get all those benefits. But so we internally invested in our tooling equipment so we could do, we have a SODIC micro EDM sync machine. We have wire capabilities of two and four thou wire. Uh, and we wanted to showcase our tooling capabilities and our molding capabilities in, in a mold. So we just, you know, Matrix Tools logo is an octagon and the letters are MT. So what we did, and you can see it zoomed in on one of the cavities that we made, <clears throat> is we made our logo's shape, the octagon, and then we did a bunch of tooling features in there that are incredibly tiny uh, in detail. Uh, there's over 60 knife edges in steel in there, and it required everything we had from a tooling standpoint to be able to make this tool. In addition, there's wall sections in here that are uh, 
under five thousandths, 0.125 uh, millimeters across. And if anybody you know, is used to thinking of minimum wall sections that you can fill in a part, it's usually not four, four and eight tenths, four thousandths and eight tenths across. That's what we have at the minimum here. And we're gated on one side, and we flow through from the gate end through this region that's down to under five thousandths. It does not hesitate or freeze like you would traditionally expect. And it's still able to continue flowing and then go through another thin region back into thick fill again. So what, it, what, what we're really getting at is we made a tool that is only able to run if all the pieces come together. So we couldn't do it without the fast response that Len mentioned that these machines are able to achieve, the incredible acceleration and speeds that they can achieve. But it also required our engineering and our tool design and construction techniques to be able to do it and the material. You know, we have the expertise, they have the expertise on the machine, but we also needed a high flow grade, a very specialty grade of uh, LCP, and that's what Sumika was able to, Sumitomo was able to give to us with the Sumika Super. So um, we, we, we used one cavity to showcase the parts, but we had three additional cavities, so in two of them, we used them as advertising pieces to showcase, you know, Sodic's name and Sumika, but we also uh, made a little word puzzle. We showcased this a little while ago, but on the top part, I don't know if you can zoom in on that at all, but the, maybe not, but the, always oh, getting it. You can start to see some of the etching there. Maybe put it under the scope. But there's 10 parts, 10, it's a word find. There's 10 words in 10 millimeters there. So that was, that's always something fun to look for in addition to that. We would normally make really small tunnel gates, but we decided to make an edge gate so that the parts could stay attached. Um, but we've done tunnel gates under 0.9 millimeters across uh, diameter. So under four thou, three and a half thou gates so far with this type of material. So I think that's it for me. No, no, thanks so much, Tom. I appreciate it. You okay on time? So you can come over to uh, the, here's a little mock-up that we use, which really shows you what the inner workings of the sodic injection unit is, is, is what's going on in there. Uh, basically, we're separating plas uh, plasticizing from dosing. We're not trying to melt and prepare material to shoot with a single screw and a, uh, and a check ring. So. So basically, this is an extruder screw. It's a stationary screw. And the material is molten. The material actually pushes the plunger back to an exa exact set position by the re high resolution encoder back here. When the dose is filled, then the, the screw stops turning and shuts off. So you have like a positive shut off, like a needle valve on the screw side. So when you inject with the plunger, you don't have any leak back on the screw side and a very tight tolerance on the between the plunger head and the barrel. So no leak behind the uh, plunger as well. So that's what's going on. Um, very much less gas, much less shear developed with an extruder screw. And then of course the plunger delivers an exact dose every single shot. So maybe if we move over to the second machine, we'll show you the LSR silicone, uh, very low viscosity material. And um, this is a 100 ton sodic, but the LSR package. Basically the same machine, but a different injection unit because uh, LSR, as everybody knows, is a, um, is a little opposite. So you have uh, cold material going into a hot mold, and then it sets up that way. So um, I'm, we're partnering with MR Mold, Rick Finney and Jerry Anderson. Uh, actually, MR Mold developed the automation on top as well, which has a slitting device. Uh, in mold slitting device, which is uh, very, uh, uh, I mean, these guys you really want to partner with. They know what they're doing and they know uh, the capabilities of what's, what's available out there. So maybe Rick can explain a little better uh, on what's going on with the, with the mold build and the uh, automation. Rick? Thank you, Len. Uh, my name is Rick Finney. I'm the owner of MR Mold and Engineering. And um, when Len asked us to partner with him at uh, 
at this event. We jumped at the chance because we know that Sodic makes a very fine piece of equipment. And uh, I thought I'd show some things that maybe, uh, and it's a little bit hard to see. I don't think the camera's going to be able to pick it up. But uh, as Len was talking, the silicone is a little bit different animal than plastic. You know, on, on that machine, it's got a hopper that's got pellets feeding into the barrel, and the barrel's melting the pellets and injecting it into a water cooled mold. And on the other hand, what we're doing is we're pumping silicone out of five gallon pails into a mixing device here, and then it's going through a barrel that's got uh, copper coils. So we're circulating water around the barrel to keep the silicone cold. And then in the, in the silicone tool itself, we have a cold runner system. So you guys might have noticed all over the place here, there's hot runner systems for sale, but this is a cold runner system. So we are circulating water through the manifold and through the nozzles to keep the silicone cold until we inject it right into the cavity. And then um, <clears throat> we're, we're using a stripper mechanism to strip the cavities off. And as uh, Len mentioned, we did make a, a robot and it's designed to do a uh, in-mold slitting, and we're working with Lynn to uh, to finish developing that. But um, <clears throat> anyways, um, you know, one of the issues with silicone is um, uh, it's not that easy to control exactly where it stays in the mold and and how to eject it. It's not. You know, silicone flash is so easy that we can't use conventional components like ejector pins and sleeves and blades and, and lifters and so on. You know, and we're very familiar with the plastics industry. We build a lot of plastics tools as, as well. And um, uh, the plastics industry has it easy when you, we, you see a place that needs to have a vent, you put an ejector pin there. Well, with silicone, we can't do that. So we have to design a tool where our parting lines are in careful locations for venting, and, uh, and the parting lines also help us control exactly where the parts are going to stay in the mold. And um, so silicone's a little bit different animal. We find it to be a little harder to, to build molds for. Uh, we also build molds for the plastics industry, and, and my guys are high-fiving each other when they get to build a plastics tool, because quite frankly, they're easier. And I, I don't mean to be sarcastic, and, and I, I know a lot of friends here are all in the plastics industry, but you know, when you can use ejector pins and sleeves to eject parts out, and the part reliably stays on the core every cycle, it's, it's, that, that's a real luxury that we don't have in the silicone industry. But um, anyways, uh, Len, thank you very much for inviting us. Thank you, Rick. R really appreciate your support over the years. Um, lastly, uh, Dietmar Wietzenauer, we actually, uh, uh, he actually flew in this uh, Nexus servo mix pumping unit, which pumps the silicone rubber up to our uh, feed throat here. So I'd like to introduce uh, uh, Dietmar. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Len, that we have the chance to show here uh, our uh, dosing system together with this application. Uh, as uh, Rick already mentioned, uh, LSR is, has his uh, difficulties, especially when you build uh, uh, molds. You have to make them very tight. The process window is very small, and uh, you have to take care that you take the best equipment uh, on the market, what you get to run this process stable. And it starts basically here at this mixing and dosing systems. Uh, LSR is, is liquid. It comes in two components and you have to mix this together in a one-to-one -one ratio. And it's available in five gallon pails or in 55 gallon. In this case, we are using uh, momentive material. There are several suppliers on the market who are offering these LSR types for all different kinds of applications. And what we are doing here Yes, uh, so we have two pumps. We grab out the silicon uh, from each pail and then it's delivered to the molding machine. And in this case, you have to take care that you get the perfect one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, if, if you get here variation inside, this can have an influence of the flow of the material, of the mechanical properties, and also on curing time. So you have to take care that you take uh, uh, mix the material very accurate. These machines we developed and uh, bring on the market 2013. That's the first time you have, you, you have seen this technology on the show in 
it's servo driven and compared to all other systems on the market we are using screws to grab out the LSR uh, unbeatable on the market we can split air and silicon it's a continuous process we guarantee that there is no air going to the process so you have no underfillings or air bubbles in the uh, part itself we have flow meters we are measuring in microliter AMB and in case you you can add colorant uh, we are measuring in nanoliter so we have a process data protocol you see all these process data shown on the machine there is the possibility to send these also to the molding machine or to um, grab these over USB uh, that you know exactly what mixture was generated that's for process documentation so material go comes to the mixing head everything is here water cooled so uh, you have your reactive admixture inside and with water temperature of uh, or room temperature you prevent that the material is curing and um, these machines can handle also very small shot sizes and I'm happy that we can show this together with uh, Sodic, they have a very unique injection unit and it goes down to very small shots and in this case it's difficult to handle the mixing ratio even when you have only 0 0.05 gram uh, shots like this okay so that that's it from my side okay fantastic thanks Dimar we're, we're so happy to show your your Nexus system it's uh, fantastic we're, we're it's wonderful thank you uh, Rick, thank you. Uh, Dave and Tom and Matrix, thank you so much. Thanks to all our, our guys, uh, our management, Kohei, uh, Yuji Akutsu, Eiji Wasi, our engineers, Tony Kakutani, Johnny Yamamoto, Mike Pelletier, also with Nexus. Thanks, Mike, for partnering all, all, probably 25 years, right? So um, if I forgot anybody, Cedric, Welcome aboard our new sales uh, person for the Midwest. Um, I'm sure we're going to have some good, successful years together. So, Bennett Howard, been with us five years. You're the best. No, thanks so much. Uh, Plastic Technology Magazine, thank you as well. So, um, great show. Thank you, folks. Thanks for joining us.